everyone, Mike here at the Guitar Bar. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about possibly our favorite topic here at the Guitar Bar, the Fender Jazzmaster. Specifically, we're going to talk about the three current lines available via Fender Japan, the Heritage, Hybrid, and Traditional series. We'll dig into some basic history of Fender Japan as an entity set apart from Fender USA, and we'll go feature by feature, spec by spec, through Fender Japan's current Jazzmaster lineup. These facts and figures will also hold true for Fender Japan's Jaguars. Anyone can pair at the spec sheets for these guitars available online, but we are going to go much deeper, analyzing the hows and whys of neck carves, pickups, and hardware choices. For decades, Fender Japan operated very much as its own independent entity set apart from Fender USA. It was only in 2015 where the brain trust at Fender aligned production of Fender Japan more closely with the USA. Let's unpack how it all started. The genesis of the Fender Japan brand involved a partnership between Kanda Shokai and Yamano Music beginning in 1982. It was a true, if you can't beat them, join them move. And the Fuji Gen factory, which was already producing the Greco brand for Kanda Shokai, was chosen as the birthplace of Fender Japan's instruments. Before Fender Japan was even up and running, Greco was already producing their own Jazzmasters and Jaguars at the Fuji Gen factory. These would date all the way back to Greco's Super Real production line in 1980. These early Greco guitars would have essentially the same features as the Jazzmasters and Jaguars first introduced in Fender Japan's 1986 catalog. There are quite a few differences between Fender's USA and Japan Jazzmaster and Jaguar production. This can include subtleties in body and pickguard shape, routing in the vibrato cavity, electronics, and hardware. Part of what makes Fender Japan such a fun rabbit hole to go down is that the majority of production is not available in the US market, and this is a practice that continues to this day. This is why here at the Guitar Bar, we've nurtured relationships in Japan so we can bring these guitars to the States in a limited capacity. They're just too cool to ignore. As the guitars on hand today are made for much smaller markets outside of the USA, it's unsurprising that the production quantities are quite limited. Models and colors tend to be replaced relatively quickly. In fact, the hybrid models that we'll be discussing today have already been supplanted by the hybrid twos, which are much more in line with the first-run American professional models. This brings us to the most recent trio of Jazzmasters offered by Fender Japan, and truly, they are among the best we have ever seen come out of that country. This also applies to their non-offset and bass offerings, too. In a nutshell, the traditional series are most closely aligned with previous Fender Japan Jazzmaster production, with vintage spec switching options and hardware. The hybrid series is looking to balance vintage spec and modern playability with a comprehensive feature set including a satin finish on the neck, height adjustable barrel saddles, locking tuners, slightly larger fret wire, and a slightly wider nut. The Heritage series is analogous to the American Vintage line, with vintage spec features head to toe, including black bobbin pickups and a nitro lacquer gloss finish. With these three new Jazzmaster models, Fender redesigned the neck carves, and this holds true across the modern Fender Japan line. The necks are bigger. These necks are larger in two primary dimensions, both the depth of the carve at the nut and also the amount of shoulder. When we're referring to the shoulder of a profile, we're talking about where the neck carve meets the fretboard edge. And these Fender Japan Jazzmasters have much more shoulder than their predecessors, really filling the palm in a comfortable way. Now, with more shoulder on these carves, it will give the perception of a chunkier carve, even if it has the same amount of depth as a neck with less shoulder. 
With the major caveat that vintage fender necks were hand-shaped and very in-depth in shoulder, there's plenty of data to suggest that the neck carves in the late 50s and early 60s were more slender overall at the nut, even if they achieved more chunk further up the neck. Since we use digital calipers to measure the neck depth at the 1st and 12th frets on all of our guitars here at the Guitar Bar, we can tell you that from Jazz Masters from 1959 to 62, they generally range from 780 thousandths to 820 thousandths at the nut, with the American Vintage line of reissues being at the upper end of that range. By contrast, the necks on these Fender Japan Jazz Masters can be as deep as 880 thousandths at the nut, with more of a U-shape akin to a 50s Telecaster. For players like myself that really prize Fender's neck carves from 1963 to 66 for their increased heft, these Fender Japan neck carves are much more in the spirit of those mid-60s shapes. And while the traditional Heritage series have a gloss finish on the neck, the Hybrid series opts for a satin finish. For both the traditional and hybrid series instruments, Fender is sticking with their modern 9.5 inch fretboard radius. And when we're referring to radius, we're talking about the curvature of the fretboard. The 9.5 inch radius boards are slightly flatter than a vintage 7.25 inch spec. This isn't a deal breaker for most players, and that slightly flatter radius can make for easier bending up the neck without notes choking out. The Heritage series, in contrast, does retain that vintage spec 7.25 inch fretboard radius. When it comes to fret wire size, Fender has opted for a vintage spec slender 6230 size on both the traditional and Heritage series models. When it comes to the hybrid series, Fender is advertising their fret wire size as narrow tall, but the reality is a bit more complex. For Fender's vintage friendly fret wire in the USA that has a bit more height and crown, their go to fret wire size is 6105. Now, this is the same fret wire used on the American vintage thin skin models, as well as many custom shop offerings. The 6105 fret wire has a strong U profile, and the Japanese version used on the hybrid models are in the same family, but has more of a pyramid shape. The hybrid frets have lost more than a little height from their factory fret dress. This can allow for a little more meat than a vintage fret, while eschewing the more bumpy nature of a 6105 fret that some players can find distracting. In short, Fender Japan has split the difference between a 6105 and a medium jumbo to keep the feel a bit more palatable for a broader range of players. But it's a bit cheeky to call this fret wire size narrow tall. Basswood and alder have been used extensively throughout Fender Japan's history, and both are relatively neutral sounding tone woods. On the traditional line, you'll see both basswood and alder used with transparent and opaque finishes. Just like with USA dealers like Wildwood or Chicago Music Exchange, Fender Japan has dealer and chain exclusives. For the traditional line, this included alder bodied Sherwood Green Jazz Masters, alder bodied Walnut Finished Jazz Masters, and basswood bodied Lake Placid Blue Finished Jazz Masters. An excruciatingly short run of late 60s Jazz Masters were also produced for the traditional line with bound rosewood fretboards and perloid block inlay. The hybrid series uses alder across the board, while the heritage series uses both alder and ash with ash reserved for blonde finished examples. For these three modern Fender Japan Jazz Masters, the pickups changed for the first time in decades. For the hybrid and traditional series models, Fender is using the V-Mod pickups also seen in the American Professional models. These pickups are functionally identical to the strat size coils seen on earlier Fender Japan models with the same tall, slim coil wind in an oversized bobbin, yet wound somewhat hotter than earlier examples. These pickups have a unique tonal color that differs from a vintage Jazzmaster pickup, and plenty of players enjoy them. If that's how you choose to live your life. The Heritage series, in contrast, uses black bobbin pickups that are much more in a vintage vein. And while the coil wind doesn't extend all the way to the bobbin edges, they are fairly hotly wound, metering at 6.75k ohms in the neck position and 7.2k at the bridge for the example we have in hand. One big boost to all three of these Jazzmaster lines are the use of full-size USA-made CTS 1 meg pots in the lead circuits. This means that the pick guards are routed for USA pots and USA knobs are used as well, making modding the wiring harness that much easier.
For a niche within niches, we have spent more time discussing the Jazzmaster Bridge than probably any other piece of hardware here at the Guitar Bar. Let's dig into the specifics of the stock bridges on these three models. The traditional and heritage models have a vintage spec bridge with threaded saddles, and these tend to work better with heavier string gauges and an offset specific setup. This includes altering the angle of the body relative to the neck, and also making sure there's correct break angle between the bridge and the tailpiece. In the past, we've gone over this process in detail as part of our demystifying series of blogs on mmguitarbar.com. With the Hybrid Series, Fender Japan chose a Mustang-style bridge with individually height-adjustable barrel saddles. These saddles really come in handy so you can match the fretboard radius to the bridge. A common complaint with older, non-adjustable Mustang bridges is that the fixed radius of the saddles didn't quite match the 7 and a quarter inch radius of vintage Fender necks. Fender Japan has taken this critique into consideration here with the Hybrid models. Otherwise, it's the same Mustang bridge that players know and love, and to our ears it offers a bit more sustain and stability over the traditional Jazzmaster bridge. Making our way back to the headstock, let's talk about nut width, as that spec differs on all three of these models. It's important to note that there are some small metric to imperial differences when accounting for nut width, and even on Fender's vintage models there can be quite a bit of variance here. Historically, Fender's B nut width is considered to be 1 and 5 8 inches. The traditional models have a 42 millimeter nut width, or 1.650 inches. This is as middle ground as middle ground gets, a true Goldilocks zone. The hybrid models are just fractionally wider at 42.5 millimeters in width, or 1.675 inches. Now you can really feel that slightly increased string spacing, especially if you have meteor hands. You have meteor hands? Meteor! <laughs> the Heritage Series has a true 1 and 5 eighths wide nut. And while factory spec for this model has it listed as 41 millimeters or 1.615, we threw a pair of calipers on there and it really does measure at 1 and 5 eighths. For tuners, all three of these guitars have a vintage Klusen style footprint, but use a different tuner within that family. The traditional series is using a Goto made Klusen style tuner, while the Heritage series uses bona fide USA made hardware from Fender's Pure Vintage line. These tuners even go as far as to have that slightly broader line central to the gear housing, just like a vintage Klusen tuner. The Hybrid Series uses Goto-made Magnum tuners that retain that vintage Klusen footprint. Now, I'm not really a locking tuner guy when it comes to Jazzmasters. I find the original Safety Post Klusen style works extremely well. But if you want that extra layer of stability, these locking tuners work very well. We'll round things out today by talking about finishes, and a gloss finish is the name of the game for all three of these Fender product lines. The traditional and hybrid series use a polyurethane gloss finish akin to the American professional models, while the heritage series uses a nitro lacquer finish over a poly sealer coat, just like the American vintage models from 1999 to 2012. The poly finishes have a real durability while the nitro lacquer on the heritage models will age akin to a vintage finish, and it really highlights the broad cuts of ash that they're using on these blonde finish examples. Let's say you've watched this video, and now you're interested in one of these Jazzmaster models. Here at the Guitar Bar, we pride ourselves on our offset setups, and we're always game to do upgrades and mods before we put one of these guitars in your hands. The vast majority of modern offsets that we sell do end up with some upgrades from our service department, and that can include hardware from Mastery or pickups from Curtis Novak or Lawler. Thanks for sticking with us on this deepest of dives into Fender Japan's modern Jazzmaster offerings. We hope you're as excited about these guitars as we are, and for all of our Jazzmasters and everything else we have here at the Guitar Bar, please check out mmguitarbar.com, and as always, stay tuned for more content.